holy grail of oral hygiene, which is perhaps the most significant development in dentistry since the integration of fluoride. I mean, it looks like you're at like ground, like the base, and you're looking to launch. So price-wise, what are you looking for, dollars-wise, and management-wise, what are you looking for? It's an honor to be a dental tank. We're looking forward to meeting all of the great startups here and all the people that attend. Just started my 52nd year in this business. I've done so many different things in this, uh, in this wonderful industry, working with so many wonderful uh, inventors, entrepreneurs, practitioners. What we do is we evaluate products and we take those products, if we love them, and there are those we don't, and we take those products and we bring them full force into dentistry. I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's pitch and seeing what's out there, what you've built, why you, why your product, why your company. So those are my four filters, bigger, faster, easier, cheaper. If you can answer those, I'm gonna be very interested in investing in you either with dollars or with time or with my reputation. Really looking forward to what we are gonna to see today and hope everybody enjoys the event. and let the games begin. Next up, we have Dr. Sal. Man, uh, Dr. Sal has been such a pleasure uh, to work with. Um, you know, we, we started uh, talking about three months ago, and um, I'll tell you, when it come, for all the tanks, when it comes to taking advice on products and pivoting and taking advice on his business, he takes it very well. And that's one thing uh, that I love working with you, uh, Sal. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you and your ability to pivot and take advice very well. And I appreciate you for that. So <clears throat> his product is the Wonder Brush for Gums. And um, it's oral care brushes for periodontics, implants, and orthodontics with others in development. Give it up for Dr. Sal. Good morning and uh, thank you all for having me. Appreciate it. Um, my name is Salvatore Di Rico. I am an orthodontist turned inventor. Initially to help my own patients with their orthodontic hygiene because it's estimated that up to 97% of orthodontic patients in braces have some degree of decalcification. And I have since moved on to other arenas. Let's talk about the holy grail of oral hygiene, which is perhaps the most significant development in dentistry since the integration of fluoride. Starting with the 75 year consideration, what happened 75 years ago? Well, that's when it was determined that we need to brush at and under our gum lines. Who determined it? Dr. Charles Cassidy Bass, a name that everybody in the dental profession knows, but there are some things that they mostly don't know. For instance, Despite his being labeled as the father of preventive dentistry, that's what appeared in the ADA journal upon his death, the father of preventive dentistry had passed away. Dr. Bass was not a dentist, okay? Dr. Bass was a physician. He was a physician specializing in malaria. He was an infectious diseases guy like Dr. Anthony Fauci and he was diagnosed with periodontal disease. And his dentist told him, we have to extract some teeth. And he said, well, time out. I'm an infectious diseases guy. We treat infection with antibiotics. Why do you treat infection with amputation? Much like Dr. Cameron referred to this morning, amputation. So he took it upon himself to determine the cause of periodontal disease and what could potentially be done to prevent it. Now, 75 years ago was a different era in a lot of ways. First of all, it was pre-fluoridation, and dental caries were rampant. In fact, in recruitment for World War II, the U.S. could not find enough recruits that passed the dental requirement, which was having 18 teeth, a minimum of 18 teeth, nine uppers in contact with nine lowers. They could not find enough 18 to 20-year-olds with 
nine uppers versus nine lowers. So they had to lower the requirement to six uppers and six lowers, a, a minimum of 12 teeth. Okay? And thank God they did. Can you imagine the world had we lost World War II? Okay? So caries were absolutely rampant. Many people lost their teeth before they could even get periodontal disease. The average lifespan in the 1940s was 69 years old. Now it's 79 years old. Okay? So what did Dr. Bass do? He took out his microscope, tried to figure out what's causing periodontal disease. And now, 75 years later, the estimates are that as many as 90% of adults and teens have some degree of periodontal disease, gingivitis or periodontis, despite brushing with a toothbrush. Okay? Now let's talk a little bit about the Bass technique. First of all, again, caries was primary. So he took a toothbrush and did his best to modify it to also address the gingiva. And, um, he was very specific in his design, the way that he spaced the tufts, the number of tufts, the way he spaced the rows, and the 45 degree angulation that he recommended using it at, okay? And now, oh, and by the way, he wouldn't even distribute it to anyone that didn't go to his office and laboratory in New Orleans, he was the dean of Tulane uh, Medical School at the time, uh, to learn how to use it, including dentists. If you were a dentist that wanted to distribute this brush to your patients, you had to learn directly from Dr. Bass how to use it. Why? Because it was very difficult to use this brush properly and be effective at and under the gum line. And by the way, the name of the brush is the Wonder Brush, spelled W-U-N-D-E-R, because it is effective under the gum line. So, there's something else that's different. Gum disease is now linked to so many other systemic health problems uh, that nobody knew about in the 1940s, okay? And so life-shortening, life-threatening diseases, heart disease, liver, lung, and kidney disease, diabetes, cancers, Alzheimer's disease. 96% of Alzheimer's patients have P. gingivalis in their brains. And COVID victims who had gum disease were nine times more susceptible to dying than those without periodontal disease. If you were morbidly obese, it was only four and a half times. If you were diabetic, it was only triple. Gum disease, nine times. So when people said Uncle Joe died, he had no comorbidities. I say, did they check his gums? So gum disease is something that's got to be stamped out, and it's not rocket science. But I actually consider it to be more, more important than rocket science because it affects 90% of the population. So my solution is the Wonder Brush for gums. And this is the money shot right here. The design is such that it has an offset head so it gets over the incisors to get to the linguals of the posterior teeth. Um, a conventional brush is not configured well enough to get to the linguals of the posterior teeth. And Dr. Bass suggested that you use the toe of the brush to get to the linguals of the anterior teeth. Well, John Q. Public and Jane Q. Public don't even know brushes have toes. Okay, so this brush enables anyone and everyone to effectively get at and under the gum line around every single tooth in the mouth, labially and lingually. And it targets, accesses, cleans, stimulates, pampers, and preserves the gums by gently and properly reaching them. Because conventional toothbrushes are potentially doing more harm than good. People are scrubbing their gums away, it's called toothbrush abrasion. And in preparing this, I learned something I didn't even know in my 35 years in dentistry. There's something called toothpaste abrasion. So we were always told, don't use a medium brush, don't use a firm brush, use a soft or ultra soft. Well, it turns out if you use toothpaste, which is abrasive, that soft bristle brush becomes a scouring pad. And I have gum recession myself, and I've been using the Bass technique for 35 years. So this is the market size for um, my product. And, um, that's the estimated number of people that have some degree of gum disease. Now, when I saw these numbers last week, I started thinking, these are Nobel numbers. And I don't mean the implant company, okay? Last week, they gave out the Nobel Prizes. Can you imagine helping six billion people? It came to mind last week when they announced the awards. So the business model is B2B, B2C, something that we talked about last night that I think you'll be hearing a lot from Isaiah, which is 
also V2V, vendor to vendor, okay? So business to business is everything from brick and mortar stores, online retailers, consumer catalogs, uh, and professional practices, um, uh, attending professional conferences, businesses, business to consumer, the obvious website, Amazon, establishing ambassador program. Licensing, we'll talk about in a minute. The competition. What are people using now to brush at and under their gum lines? That's the quote unquote competition, okay? As I said, they're using toothbrushes. Any and every toothbrush they can get their hands on. And the best technique is arguably the most, the second most misused term in dentistry because before Dr. Bass described the 45 degree angulation that you hold the brush at, he described the brush. Ten, he published the brush 10 years prior. So people that think they're using the Bass technique without using the Bass brush, which isn't even sold anymore by the original company that manufactured it, are not using the Bass technique at all. Okay, it's a bastardization, it's a misnomer. And by the way, the first probably most used term in dentistry is Novocaine. It hasn't been used since 1948. Um, so even though that's the quote-unquote com quote competition, there is no comparison because toothbrushes are doing a lot more harm than good. As I said, toothbrush abrasion and potentially even toothpaste abrasion. Marketing and growth strategy involves public relations, influences and ambassadors, different sorts of marketing. These are all obvious things, um, including retail buyers conferences. I've had meetings over the summer with CVS, Walgreens, Bed Bath & Beyond, and so on and so forth, and I have others coming up next week. I am the founder and manager. I've been, I've been granted over 25 patents nationally and internationally. The traction is the first patent came through last week. Others are pending, and I'm in talks with Benko about getting into their catalog and we're going electric. And this is where the licensing comes into play. Hello, um, you know, um, Burst, you know, would you like to license our head design? Um, you know, um, Sonicare, how about you? Would you like to, you know, license the head design? And so there's plenty of potential for that. Quip, it's a phone call, right? These are other patented products that I have. The Wonder Brush for implant dentures, which I called Implant Clean, but I'm so into this Wonder Brush concept because it gets under the implant dentures. So now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, changing the name. The Wonder Brush for braces because it gets under the braces. I have the Aligner Shiner in progress uh, and gum liners because 160 million pets, two years of age and older, have gum disease. And the veterinarians estimate that um, Pets will live four to five years longer if their oral hygiene is maintained. And I have an oral irrigator tip uh, in the works as well. I'm looking for financial partners, strategic partners to support productions, public relations, an ambassador program, distribution, and research. And I thank you for your time. Sal, well, great to... Uh hear about what you're doing. Thank you. What is the longevity of a single row bristle brush like this? I mean, it looks like you're at like ground, like the base and you're looking to launch. What it really comes down to for entrepreneurs is having control over what happens in my business day to day. And without great tools and systems, it's really hard to master that control. PDA allows us to help people discover their why they're doing what they're doing, get really connected to the purpose, and then work the numbers backwards from there. We're bringing people together, getting them out of their current environment, and just boosting the culture, boosting the productivity, and everyone likes to be productive and efficient and impactful toward their patients. So that's what we try to do with our PDA docs, get their business house in order. Then we try to get them to where they're increasing their communication skills, their ability to be able to talk to their patients and their team. And when stress is off, all of a sudden you're, you're so much nicer, you're so much, you're, you're, you have so much more fun doing what you're doing.
South. Great to uh, hear about what you're doing. Thank you. A fellow Westchester-based dentist. And Brooklynite. And Brooklynite, yes. Um, so what, what is the, uh, the key differentiator in your brush? And what are the approximate, what's the cost that the brushes are selling for? Okay, so the differentiators are, um, can I go back to the, I don't know if I can get my slides back, but anyway. So it has several different features. Oh, good, here we go. Let's see, is this, okay, let's just go back to the money shot here. So it has several, several different features. First of all, it has only one row of bristles. Now, there's only one brush on the market that's called a sulcus brush, right. and I believe that's a misnomer because uh, Butler makes it, and it has two rows of bristles. And we all know that two people can't fit through a doorway at the same time, so how can two rows of bristles fit under the gum line at the same time? Um, so that's the first issue is it gets to where it needs to get to. The second, here we go. The second issue is the vertically offset head to get over the incisors when you're brushing the linguals of the posterior teeth and to get over the posterior teeth when you're brushing the lingual of, of the incisors. So it, and, and it only has five tufts because um, of the curvature of the lower incisors. So it can literally, you can hold it as a conventional toothbrush to access directly rather than having to use the toe of a conventional toothbrush. Um, the, you can't see the handle here, but I believe you have a sample in front of you. Um, the handle has uh, the bristles offset at 45 degrees. So the bass technique is a 45 degree angulation. So it is somewhat self-guided, making it easier for John Q. Public and Jane Q. Public to be able to use effectively. You know, as dentists, we can probably even use a broom or a hairbrush and make it a sulcus brush, but John Q. Public and Jane Q. Public cannot. So the second question was pricing. Yeah. Um, right now they are sold for $7.25 um, retail, and, the, and they're, they're absolutely brand new. I mean, the website was just finished last week. They, um, and the cost is just under a dollar per brush. Was, was that, does that answer your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, the bristles are made, uh, is it anything novel or are they similar? No, nylon, but you know what? I spent about, <laughs> don't laugh, I spent about two hours straight testing 16 different bristle lengths and firmnesses, because bristles come in different diameters, firmnesses, and you know, I had to get the right combination, so I felt it wasn't too harsh but yet effective, because I did not want people scrubbing. That's what's causing toothbrush abrasion. So I wanted it to be gentle on the tissues, but firm enough to still be able to get under the gum line, not like a wet noodle. Now, when, I, when I've seen other people's conventional toothbrushes, after a fairly short period of time, they start looking like uh, the Red Sea, you know, like yes. Moses parted them. And Splaying, yes. Folding over. Um, what is the longevity of a single row bristle brush like this? You know what? That's a fabulous question and time will tell and here's why I say that. My first brush, as I mentioned, was for braces, okay? Also a single row brush, so this was a modification from that brush. The handle was the same, offset 45 degrees, but it was a straight neck. And my patients bring me their brush when it wears out and they get a new one, no charge, you know, just bring me your used one, you get a new one, okay? It's all over the board for those kids. And, um, you know, some of them were changing their brush every month and others use the same brush for four, three, four, five months and their hygiene was impeccable and their brush lasted. So it all depends like anything else on wear and tear and how much they use it and time will tell. But thank you for asking. Okay, okay I'll jump in. Hey Please. Sal. So Couple questions. So obviously, the studies continue to show sonic brushes in general have more efficacy of hygiene at gingival lines and interproximal areas. We all know that, and that's why you're probably also, I'm thinking, looking at uh, sonic toothbrushes and what we'll call them power electric brushes. So my question to you is: until you're there. Do you feel that you want to be selling in dental offices? Do you have an approach to get like these brushes in dental offices for implant maintenance, perio maintenance, and all of that? 
Like, what do you see as your approach of getting out to the marketplace into dental offices? Well, um, that's a great question. And unfortunately, COVID has interfered with that. Um, COVID actually helped and hurt. So first of all, the way that it helped is it enabled me the time required to develop and have this product produced. So the three months that I was down gave me tons of time and I focused 100% of that time on this brush. So that's why it's so brand new. Um, it, it wouldn't be out yet had we not shut down for three months, okay? Because it's all a process, as you can imagine. But um, so that said, um, I am used to going to conferences all around the country, usually between six and 10 a year, and marketing the product, uh, my other products. But I've not been able to do that since this product came out. So I have not even been able to test the waters to see how well it's received, quite frankly. But certainly the ambassador program that you hear other companies having makes total sense to me because what hygienist is not going to say this brush is superior to other brushes in targeting your gum line? Like what hygienist would not have that opinion? Is there one in the country? I doubt it. So I think an ambassador program would certainly help in that effort. So I, I, I guess what I'm, so let me ask you this. Current offices that are buying from you, tell me, are you selling to no, current offices? No, this is so brand, brand new. I have not gone to a dental. This is the first conference I've been to in literally two years. Okay. So, so no, I don't have any. Well, I have a few practices that order my other brushes that I sent a sample to, and so then they ordered these as well. Um, but that's about it. And, and my own patients that I've given them to that absolutely love them and can't say enough about them. But as far as, no, I have not gone to conferences to start marketing to practices. Okay, so I'll go more to the point. I'll be Jeremy right now. So what are you looking for to invest in your company? Do you have, are you going to be also looking for like a CEO, someone to run your company? I mean, it looks like you're at like ground, like the base and you're looking to launch. So price wise, what are you looking for dollars wise and management wise? What are you looking for? Yeah, those are all things that can certainly be discussed. There are so many options that I'd rather discuss that in private, if that's okay. Of course, everything's okay. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Sure. Good presentation. I think there was a lot of education that went on there. Uh, Thank you. Th this, is, um, this crowd may be a little bit more knowledgeable on, on the clinical or dental sides than your, your average, <laughs> perhaps, investor crowd. Um, so to, to lose point, to get to the point, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering about, the, the behavioral element here, right? Um, in other words, you know, especially if you go electric, right? Two, two, there are really two aspects of it that are relevant. First of all, right, somebody is going to have to brush their teeth now with two different toothbrushes, right? And it's hard enough to get them to brush two minutes twice a day the correct way with one toothbrush. The second bit is, especially again with the electric power, we're going to be trusting the patient to, you know, gently clean in the sulcus. Right. I mean, patients know, you know, they, they, they're sort of a harder, faster, you know, population on the average. Right. They think harder and faster is better. So how, how do we get them to use it, you know, twice the, the, the proper amount? Uh, and how do we trust them in cleaning such sensitive areas that could otherwise, you know, lead to attachment loss? That's a fabulous, fabulous question. Uh, both of them are. OK. So first of all, when you say they have to use two different brushes, um, I'll explain that there are a lot of things in life that require multiple implements. So first of all, uh, when you're painting, you use a brush and a roller. Everybody accepts that. That's routine. When you're vacuuming, you use a floor tool and a crevice tool. That's you know, a routine as well. When you're taking care of your lawn, you use a mower and an edger. So there are plenty of things. When you play golf, I'm not a golfer, but you know, many, many, many more than two. But the point is that it will, there will be a need to educate people on the importance. And secondly, that they are um, the best technique. If you add up the time recommended, at least 75% is supposed to be geared towards the gum line, not towards the teeth. So 75% of brushing is supposed to be gingival. And so this then becomes the primary brush, and the toothbrush is secondary. So those two things, I think, will need to be uh, you know, use educationally for people to really understand.
scrap the toothbrush. <laughs> I'm serious. Think about it. The best technique, if you add up all those 10 seconds here, 15 seconds there, three quarters of the time is supposed to be spent at the gum line. So if three quarters of your time is focusing on the gums, scrap the toothbrush. You'll get a 75. If you scrap the Wonder Brush for gums, the best you can do is a 25. Care. He just got off the stage talking to the dental tank members and how to go. Yeah, I think it went very well. The need for perio care and implant care, so great. Absolutely. Tremendous. And, you know, when you saw my presentation, if you saw my presentation, 90% of the world's population has some degree of gingivitis or periodontitis, despite brushing with a toothbrush. What does that mean? Imagine if... So well, I think it's in the name of the product. It's a toothbrush, right? Well, exactly. That's why mine doesn't is not called a toothbrush. It's the Wonder Brush for gums. And imagine if Tylenol was sold, and 75 years later, it was determined that it didn't knock out fevers or headaches. You know, would it still be on the market? I don't think so. So the important thing is that this is a product that is a long time coming. Well, since you know, when we're young, uh, we're in the tooth decay prone years, you get out of that, and then more teeth are lost to, to gum disease than tooth decay. And so an emphasis on the gums and the wonder brush for gums, right, is, uh, is, is so necessary. Absolutely, no question about it. And you, as the founder of AOSH, know that better than anybody else because it's not only about losing teeth, gum recession, bad breath, it's about your overall health. And, you know, chronic illnesses that are uh, closely linked to gum disease, and including COVID. I don't know if you heard, but COVID was found to be nine times more fatal in those with gum disease than those without, which is twice as bad as being morbidly obese and three times as bad as being diabetic. Yeah. Terrible. No, I'm with you on that 100%. Yep. So you've got a great life-saving product. Thank you. And um, and so what would you say? So the biggest takeaway is that is that the, uh, the Wonder Brush for gums really for the first time maybe focuses completely on the gums and and like when people hear about a brush that is just for the gums it's like well that must be must be so important it gets its own brush see that's what we it doesn't seem like we've been in that space and you're bringing people into that space so i i commend you for that and i congratulate you on that and i think that will draw a lot of attention to the issue of gum disease uh but one of the tank members asked you a, a question about you know well it's hard enough to get people to brush period but now you got two brushes uh re restate your your uh, response to that Scrap the toothbrush. <laughs> I'm serious. Think about it. The best technique, if you add up all those 10 seconds here, 15 seconds there, three quarters of the time is supposed to be spent at the gum line. So if three quarters of your time is focusing on the gums, scrap the toothbrush. You'll get a 75. If you scrap the Wonder Brush for gums, the best you can do is a 25. Yeah. All right. You heard it from Sal from uh, Implant and Perio Care. Thank you for being in the Dell Tank. Thanks for talking to me, Sal, and, and uh, much success to you in the future. Thank you so much. And to you as well. Chris. Thank you. Thank you. We are now in the process of raising our second round of financing to expand our customer base, enter new markets, and further enhance our product to add excitement to the clear appliance market. Ordinary is over. How confident are you that you're pat protected here and that a copycat couldn't come around? This is gonna be a little tough. It's really problematic. Hey everybody, welcome to Nashville. <laughs> 
And what is this Nashville event all about? Well, first off, I can tell you this. When you purchase a ticket for the dental festival in Nashville, you'll be purchasing a ticket that allows you to go to up to 20 different dental conferences. These conferences are usually located all throughout the country at different times, but we've brought everybody together at one place to collaborate. So we're gonna be at the Omni Hotel, the Joseph Hotel, and the Tribram Marriott Hotels. Those hotels, literally, you step out the door and you walk across the street, they're all there. And what it looks like as an attendee is, is each day you get to pick the conference that you want to go to. You only need to purchase one ticket and you get in to all of them. Another really cool thing is this, is that we believe that fun is extremely important. We, learn, we believe that you learn 10 times faster when you're having fun. And so we believe 50% should be education and 50% should be amazing fun and experiences that you will never forget. So welcome to the Dental Festival in Nashville. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. This event is the 6th through the 10th of July in 2022. And if you wanna come for two days, one day, three days, or four, that is completely up to you. Same cost of a ticket, and you just pick the conferences that you want to go to. It's totally up to you. We have a central vendor hall where everybody could go and learn about all the different products and innovations in dentistry. And we have separate conferences throughout uh, the entire event that you get to choose from. So whatever you wanna be educated on, I'm sure that we have it. Make sure to get your ticket as soon as possible. The sooner you purchase your ticket, uh, the cheaper the ticket will be. And please remember, if you don't like fun, this conference is not for you. But if you like to have the time of your life, dental festival's for you. I will see you there.